first Sunday of July and guess what I am the first person who has the privilege to say hello to you today welcome to International Christian Center Mombasa join us for a time of worship through song join us for a time of worship in giving join us for a time of worship in hearing the word and make sure you are actively participating enjoy yourself Heavenly Father, we commit this service into your hands and we ask that, Lord, you would envelop us in your presence. Help us to hear what you have to say to us today and respond in a, a manner that is worthy of the revelation of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
righteousness. We bless you.
we thank you because you are a compassionate God. You care about us. Your word says that you were tempted in every way like, and you did not sin. And so you are not unable to feel 
for us. Church, I want to read from Mark chapter 6. This is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. I know you know it. Um, I'll read from verse 34. It says, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion towards them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now time is far gone. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered them and said unto them, Give them to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? And he said unto them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. And when they knew, they said, Five and two fishes. And he commanded them to make them all sit down by the companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and fifties. And then you know how the story goes. And then he took the bread and he blessed it and broke it and gave it and it was multiplied. But the thing that catches me that I want to share with us today is that Jesus looked at the people and he said, uh, the Bible says he was filled with compassion for them. And I want you to know that when Jesus looks at your situation, he is filled with compassion for you. He doesn't just say like the disciples we saw, they told Jesus, tell them to go away and eat. Everyone is tired, it's the end of the day. No, no, Jesus is compassionate about you. And so if you have a need today, I invite you to let him have it. He understands it. He will take care of you. So I want to ask you, lift up your hand in faith to God as I pray for every need that you may have. But as we pray, please know that we're not praying to an idol or to a God that does not care. He has compassion. It is on record that he had compassion even then and he has compassion on you now. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for every hand that is lifted up to you in faith. We pray, Lord, for every need that that hand represents. We ask you, Lord God Almighty, that you will meet with these needs. Lord, whether it be needs of provision, whether it be that we have loved ones that are sick, whether it be that we are looking for jobs, whatever it is, Lord, you are not without compassion. You are actually full of compassion for us. And so we pray in faith believing that in your compassion, you will move in, into action and you will make a way. You will make provision. You will make multiplication. Whatever it is that we need, you will provide because you are our provider. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I also want to ask you if you are a minister uh, a person who serves don't let's, let's let's not be like the disciples let us be like the lord our lord who was moved with compassion and as we do that the lord will bless us and now i invite you again to get up on your feet as we sing this declaration song unto the lord enjoy the rest of the service <laughs> Oh, 
going to give second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 to 8 says whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly and whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully and then it says each of us should give what you have purposed in your own heart to give not um, under any sort of compulsion because god loves a cheerful giver I'd like to invite you to give the ways that you can give here at ICC Mombasa will be uh, shared with you shortly. But just remember, not under compulsion, but what you have purposed in your heart to give. Give to the Lord and you will see what he will do. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. Bountifully, you reap bountifully. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for um, this time of giving. Enable us, Lord to give to you from a place of cheerfulness and gratitude for the glory and honor of your name in jesus name we pray amen we would like to invite you and give you the opportunity to worship the lord with your giving all of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now there are several ways in which you can give here at icc mombasa if you're giving through mpesa our pay bill number is 488 508. I will repeat that 488508. For account, you write offering or tithe or special offering or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can also give through our equity bank till, and the till number is 488508. If you would like to give through PayPal, Sendwave, World Remit, Simba, or any other app that you can use. The details are also on your screen right now. Our bank account number is 100,000 and our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. Our SWIFT code is on your screen. And our PayPal email address is info at iccmombasa.org. Info at iccmombasa.org. Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. Do you know about the Jitume campaign? Lately, the sun has been hotter than usual. This is because we have been recklessly cutting down trees. If we don't do something soon, our country will become a desert. We each need to plant at least one tree. Hashtag Jitume, take the initiative. Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to our sermon time right here at International Christian Center Mombasa. I believe that you have enjoyed this service this far, that you have enjoyed and been blessed greatly during our time of worship through music, our time of giving, our time of ministration in prayer, and even right now you will be fully blessed as we get into the word for today. So thank you for being here and I trust that as we share in the word of God that he will minister powerfully to you today. It is my prayer that the word of God will bring light into the situations and into the things that God has in store for you today. My name is Pastor Wanji Kondongo and our sign interpreter for today is Catherine and we both say a big welcome to each one of you. As we get into the word for today, I would like to request your help here. Please, if you are watching on iccmsa.online, if you're watching on iccmombasa.org or our Facebook or our YouTube channel, please pick this link and send it to one person. You never know who might be waiting for a word of hope, a word of encouragement, a word of faith to rise up from the inside of them and face the situations that they need to face today. So join with me in spreading the gospel by sending this link to one person today. Remember, this obe obeying this is our responsibility. The outcome of what comes after we send this link is God's 
responsibility. As we begin the second half of the year 2021, we want to begin this uh, second half by declaring Judah shall go first. Say it, with, say it with me, church, Judah shall go first. And that's what we want to do today, is to share some key things, and then we shall spend some time in the presence of God. And I believe this is going to be a rich and transformational time in the presence of God today. Let me ask you, allow me to ask us with a question. What do we normally do when we are faced with difficulties and challenges? When we find ourselves going through a rough patch and we don't know where to go or what to do, where to hide and where to run or even where to turn. Oftentimes I know that we try to solve these issues by ourselves, isn't it? We try to do things by ourselves to see how to get ourselves out of these situations. We work harder, we push harder, we pray harder. If you are like me, the first thing that comes to your mind when you face a challenge or a difficulty is you cry harder, you know? You cry yourself a river, especially when our efforts don't bear fruit. We get frustrated and tired and distressed and discouraged. But today, as we dig into the word of God, we want to see another way, a different way of dealing with challenges, difficult, difficulties, situations that seem impossible in our lives. This different way, we are calling it Judah shall go first. This new way, this wonderful way that we will read from the Bible as we look at different examples is called Judah shall go first. And so I want us to look at three examples Three ways that men and women in the Bible used Judah shall go first to get out of the situations they were in, to get out of the challenges, the difficulties, and the hard seasons that they found themselves in. And our first story that we are going to read is the story of a woman called Leah in the Bible. We are going to read from the book of Genesis, chapter 29. From, the, from verse 31 to 35. If you don't have a Bible, just follow along. The scripture is going to be at the bottom of the screen, screen you can read with us. Genesis 29, verse 31 to verse 35. This is what it says. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive. But Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She called him Reuben, for she said, It is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. Verse 33, she conceived again. And when she gave birth to her son, she said, Because the Lord has heard that I am not loved. He gave me this one too. So she called him Simeon. Again, in verse 34, she conceived. And when she gave birth to her son, she said, Now at last my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. And so he was named Levi. Verse 35, she conceived again. And when she gave birth to her son, she said, This time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. If you have a paper Bible, please underline that part that says, This time... I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. If you have a U version application Bible, just go ahead and highlight, and highlight that in, gru, in green rather, or gray, or blue, or whatever color you fancy. This time, I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. We see Leah in this text of scripture. She was Jacob's wife and she was unloved. The husband loved Rachel, who was his second wife, but Leah had three sons. And with every son that she conceived, she wanted her husband to love her. With every son that she conceived, she had an expectation that her husband will love her, that her husband will be attached to her, that her husband will finally see her as the woman that was meant for her. But this did not happen, meaning that she tried these things on her own, but nothing came out of it. She was frustrated, and she was hurting, and she was discouraged even after having these sons. She had tried. She did her best. But when she got her fourth son, there was a difference. There was a change. Leah decided to no longer struggle or fight for love and acceptance from her husband. And she just lifted up her voice and praised the Lord. Leah called her fourth son Judah, which means praise. Judah means praise. She praised the Lord. She lifted up praise to the Lord. This one son, the fourth born, ended up being a son that was honored and preferred even by the Lord. The lineage of Judah became the lineage of the Messiah. 
the lineage of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, God picked what was dedicated to him in praise. Judah was dedicated to God in praise and used that for the deliverance of the children of Israel, for the blessings of the nation and the leader of God's people. It is the tribe of Judah that became the tribe of kings. It's where it started off with King David. He was part of the tribe of Judah. And even our Lord Jesus Christ was called the son of David. He was still part of the tribe of Judah. Friends, we need to dedicate ourselves, our lives, and all the Lord, and all of our, everything that we have, to the Lord in praise. So that God can pick what is given to him in praise, and he can work out his purposes and his destiny for our lives. Praise be the name of the Lord. In Judges chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, this is what it says. After the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? Remember, in this story, they're entering the promised land in Canaan. Who, is, who of us is to go first to fight against the Canaanites? The Lord answered, Judah shall go up. Judah shall go first. I have given the land into their hands. In this portion of scripture, the Israelites are to go up and finish conquering the land of Canaan, the land of promise, the land of destiny that God had for them. Joshua is dead at this point. They are by themselves and they are asking the Lord what to do. God says Judah shall go first. Some versions of the Bible say Judah shall go up. God told them that he had given the land to Judah. It was the promised land, yes, for the all children of Israel, all the tribes. But God says, I have given it to Judah. The victory, the land belongs to Judah. It belongs to a people who praise. You see, victory does not belong to hard work. Victory does not belong to diligence and connections or corruption. Victory belongs to praise. You see, church, Judah means praise. And God told them that he had given victory to praise. Praise does not care if it is sunny or stormy. Praise does not need perfect condition or perfect weather. Praise is not dependent on the economy. Praise is not scared of the virus or the pandemic. It is not stopped by masks or closed sanctuaries in our day. Praise hears no complaints and knows no surrender. Praise has the victory. And therefore, praise must go fast every day any day, let your praise as a believer, as a child of God, always go fast. Allow me to speak to you as a church of ICC Mombasa. It is time for us to praise our way into our inheritance and walk in the fullness of God's purposes. We will not do it, dear friends, with our own effort or hard work. We will win only with praise. It is time for us to lift up praise like Claire and declare, I am done with my efforts and my trying. I am done with my complaining. I am done with all these things. I no longer want to do it my way, but God's way, and I will praise. As a nation, as a city of Mombasa, with everything going on around in our lives, our cities, our nations, the world, it may feel like it is too difficult to praise, especially in the season that we find ourselves in. And I want to say to us, it was not even easy for Leah to praise either. No wonder the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, allow me to read this for you. It says the following, Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. The Bible tells us to give God a continually, continually the sacrifice of praise. And if it is continual, then that means it does not end. Something that is continual does not reduce, does not dwindle. It is continual. It is always there. When we feel like it and even when we don't feel like it. When we are happy and when we are sad. Always seek to bring praise to the Lord. When you are busy or when you are relaxed, we are to offer God the sacrifice of praise. It reminds me of the sacrifices that were offered at the tabernacle in the Old Testament. The fire at the altar was to never be quenched. The fire at the altar 
was to never go out. And I believe that that was a type or a shadow of the sacrifice of praise that you and I are supposed to bring to the Father today. A continual. It is to be continual from us and it is continual even in heaven. Praise, my dear friends, is a sacrifice that you and I decide to give whether we feel like it or not. Judah must go first. We must send praise first. That is our first example, the example of Leah. Allow me to share with us a second example. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to 6, we find a man called David. This is what the scriptures say. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to 6, again the verses are down here. David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. Verse 3, when David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahinom and of Jezreel, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Can you please go ahead and align that? But David found strength in his Lord his God. David, we find him here, he's in trouble. His men are discouraged and despair, and they want to give up. But David, even when he's afraid of his men who want to stone him, we see him doing something very, very interesting. The Bible says that he encouraged, he encourages himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. How do you and I encourage ourselves in the Lord? How can we be like David and learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord? Let's read Psalm chapter 42. Actually, I'll only read a few verses. Please read the whole of Psalm chapter 42 at your own time. Because when you read this whole Psalm, the Psalmist acknowledges the troubles. The, he acknowledges the pain, the taunts by the enemy, the frustration, and the ridicule that was around him. The Psalmist even acknowledges his own struggles, their own struggles as a people. But in verse uh, verse 9 to 10, allow me to read. This is what it says, Psalm 42, verse 9 and 10. He says, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Where is your God? But even in that pain, Dear friends, even in that ridicule and shame and oppression, this is what the psalmist goes ahead to declare in verse 11 of the same chapter. This is what he says, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior, my God. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. Meaning you might be downcast and you might be feeling all you're feeling, but you know what? We have to praise the Lord, our Savior, our God. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior, my God. Friends, that is how you encourage yourself in the Lord. That is how you let Judah go fast or you let Judah go up. The psalmist says, I will praise him. I will exalt him. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He is my God. He is God in the good times and in the bad times. He is the God. He's my God in the morning and he is still my God when the sun goes down. I will praise him. Yet I will praise him. David encouraged himself to praise. And we need to learn that before we go to war, we must let praise rise. Praise should always go first. Whatever challenge you are facing or difficulty that is coming into your way, whatever issue that is seeming impossible right now in your life, you are going to war with it, dear friends. Let praise go first. Let praise Arise and go fast. Remember, victory is with Judah, 
It's not in our effort. Victory is not in our effort. It is not in our planning. It is not in our scheming. It is not in our plotting. It is not in ruining someone else's reputation in order for you to get ahead. That is not where victory comes from. It is not in anything that you and I can do. Praise has the victory. Praise has the victory. It is not in corruption or commotion. Praise has the victory. Victory is not in the drive or dedication or in the meticulous planning and plotting that we do as human beings when things become hard. Praise, praise is the victory. Praise has the victory. Praise has the victory. Just remind yourself right now that praise has the victory. No matter what, praise. Let praise have the victory in your life today. Our third example, and this is our final example, is found in the book of Ruth chapter 1. Again, I urge you, by the mercies of God, go and read the whole of Ruth chapter 1. In the interest of time, I will not be able to read the whole of Ruth chapter 1. Read the whole of Ruth chapter 1. I will read a few verses, 19 and 20, for our context today. But read the whole chapter. And before I read, allow me to say this. I believe, for us as a church in ICC Mombasa, I believe for you and your family and your home that there is a new season that is knocking at the gates. And only Judah can be used, can be able to usher the change you and I so desperately need. The change that you and I want to see in our nation, in our homes, in our families, in our churches, in our school, can only be ushered through praise. Ruth chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, this is what it says. So the two women, talking about Ruth and Naomi, went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Now verse number 20, don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. That is what Naomi declares about her life and about everything that God has done in her life. The name Naomi means pleasant or one that is pleasing. But Naomi, as she enters Bethlehem, at the very gates of Bethlehem, forsakes her identity. She forsakes her identity. Why? Because of her pain. Because of her loss. Because of her shattered dreams. Because of her hopes that have been not met. Or um, things that she had expected that have not happened the way she had wanted. Because of her troubles. Because of her unfulfilled dreams. Because of her grieving. She refuses to be called pleasant or pleasing. And she tells people to call me Mara, which means bitter. Call me bitter. Rather than remaining at the place of praise, this woman called Naomi, who is from Judah, gives it all up. And she says, call me Mara because God has afflicted me. She refuses to praise she refuses to praise. But I want you to put something, because Naomi is not walking alone. Naomi has another widow, a woman who also has lost her husband, has lost her brother-in-law, has lost her family-in-law, has left her gods, has left her family, has left everything that she has known to walk with Naomi into this new land. Meaning, Naomi is not alone. She has another widow by her side. Who? now refuses to be bitter, but she comes seeking the praise of the God of Israel. Ruth says to Naomi, your God shall be my God. That's what she said when they were leaving. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. Naomi was from the tribe of Judah, but Ruth, a Moabite woman, a Gentile, one who was considered unclean, says that your people shall be my people. Your people of praise shall be my people. Your God, Jehovah, shall be my God. Naomi is here busy complaining against God, but Ruth chooses this God. Naomi is complaining about this God. Ruth chooses this God. It is no wonder then that, Naomi, that Ruth became the great grandmother of Jesus because Naomi gets cut off 
and Ruth gets grafted in. Naomi is removed, Ruth gets in into this lineage. She chose Judah. She chose to get married to Judah. She left behind her gods and her people and turned to Jehovah. Church, will you choose the bitterness and pain of Mara or will you choose the praise that comes from God? Judah must go first. Friends, the enemy is after your praise. He's after my praise. And seeking to steal God's praise and leave us with bitterness, with grief, with pain, with struggle, with anguish, and with fear. The enemy is out to exploit us and steal our praise. And he will use our words, our words of anguish and bitterness and complaining and grudging to hold us bondage and keep us from walking in God's purposes. You and I today have to choose to not focus on everything that has gone wrong and watch and, and, and everything that has caused us pain and bitterness. We need to watch our words, watch your words, watch your thoughts and ensure that you are always sending Judah fast no matter what is happening in your life. Friends, this is a season where confusion, rage, bitterness want to speak. They are sitting at the gates of your home, the gates of our city, the gates of our nation, the gates of our regions, the gates of our churches, and even the gates of our houses, and speaking to all manner of people who are passing by. There is mounting pressure that the enemy of our soul wants to exploit. The devil is seeking to cause explosions of pain and and hate. The enemy wants us to focus on disappointment and despair, to see everything wrong and not focus on what God is doing. The enemy wants us to gossip and lie and hate and complain. But God, but God, God is saying to us in this season, send Judah fast. To be like Ruth, the Moabite woman, who even though she had lost her husband, chose God and chose Judah. Judah representing praise. And it is praise that will lead us to victory. It is praise that will lead us to breakthrough. It is praise that will lead us to a new season. In this last half of 2021, God wants to establish us and work out his purposes in us and for us. He wants to fulfill his promises and bring us into the fulfillment of everything that he has in store for us. It is the season, dear friends, of prophetic fulfillment. God wants us to conquer, invade, capture every bit of territory that we have lost in the past seasons. Everything that we have lost, God wants us to capture. He wants us to conquer. He wants to invade. He wants to restore. He is giving us the grace, the anointing to do it. But he will do this when we let Judah go first, when we allow praise to go first in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, praise cannot be confused. Praise cannot be confused. When David let praise rise, when he allowed praise to rise, when he encouraged himself and praised the Lord, God said to him, pursue and you will recover all. Pursue them and you will recover all. Part of the blessing in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 for the people of God was that when an enemy attacked one way, God promised, the Lord said, he promised, he would cause them to flee seven ways. That when the enemy came like a flood, that God will raise a standard by his Holy Spirit. As we let praise go fast, as we let Judah go fast, the enemies who are attacking us in this season will flee and God will establish us in his plan and in his purpose. Where confusion and, and anger want to set order, God is saying there is a shout of victory right on your lips. Shout for victory with your lips. Release it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God in Jesus' mighty name. You are Judah. You are a person of praise. So send praise fast today and usher in the new season in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, our Lord and our God. Church, let us pray. We give you thanks, our Lord and our God, and we praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. We exalt you. For God, there is none like you. We lift up our praise to you. That don't matter the circumstance or the issue that we find ourselves in, Lord, from today going forward, we will choose to walk in praise. 
whatever difficulty or challenge or issue or impossibility, God will choose to praise you first. We will choose to send Judah first in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us for our service today. And this week, send Judah first in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.